Section one of the Phenomenology of Mind, Volume two. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by phone. The Phenomenology of Mind, Volume two, by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Translated by James Black Bailey. Chapter six. Spirit. Translator's note. In the preceding section there is analyzed the attempt on the part of individuality to operate as its own legislator and judge of laws holding for individuals. Individuality may claim the privilege of enunciating laws universal in character, but having their source and inspiration solely in the single individual. Such laws can at best only be regulative and cannot be constitutive of the substance of individuality, for the substance of individuality necessarily involves other individuals within it in short individuality is itself only realized as a part of a concrete whole of individuals its life is drawn from common life in and with others to attempt to enunciate laws from itself as if it could create the conditions of its own inherent universality can only issue in one result laws are furnished without the content which gives those laws any meaning or else the laws and the content remain from first to last external to one another but if laws are purely formal they cease to be laws that is constitutive conditions of individuality hence the attempt above described is sure to break down by its own futility what is wanted to give the laws meaning is the concrete substance of social life and when this concrete substance is provided ipso facto the attempt of individuality to create laws disappears for these laws are already found in operation in social life only such laws have reality but this involves the further step that individuality is only realized only finds its true universal content in and with the order of a society here alone is individuality what it is in truth at once a particular focus of self-consciousness and a realization of universal mind this condition where individuality is conscious of itself only in and with others and conscious of the common life as its own is the stage of spiritual existence spiritual existence and social life thus go together the following section begins the analysis of this phase of experience which extends from the simplest form of sociality the family up to the highest experience of universal mind religion the immediately succeeding section may be taken as the keystone of the whole arch of experience traversed in the phenomenology here it is pointed out that all the preceding phases of experience have not merely been preparing the way for what it is to follow but that the various aspects hitherto treated as separate moments of experience are in reality abstractions from the life of concrete spirit now to be discussed and analyzed it is noteworthy that from this point onward the argument is less negative in its result either directly or indirectly and is more systematic and constructive this is no doubt largely because hitherto individual mind as such has been under review and this is an abstraction from social mind or spiritual existence End of translator's note. Chapter six Spirit Reason is spirit when its certainty of being all reality has been raised to the level of truth, and reason is consciously aware of itself as its own world, and of the world as itself. The development of spirit was indicated in the immediately preceding movement of mind, where the object of consciousness, the category pure and simple, rose to be the notion of reason when reason observes this pure unity of ego and existence the unity of subjectivity and objectivity of for itselfness and in itselfness this unity is immanent has the character of implicitness or of being and consciousness of reason finds itself but the true nature of observation is rather the transcendence of this instinct of finding its object lying directly at hand and passing beyond this unconscious state of existence the directly perceived angeschaut category the thing simply found enters consciousness as the self-existence of the ego ego which now knows itself in the objective reality and knows itself there as the self but this feature of the category that is of being for itself as opposed to being immanent within itself is equally one-sided and a moment that cancels itself the category therefore gets for consciousness the character which it possesses in its universal truth it is self-contained essential reality an und für sich sein des wesen this character still abstract which constitutes the nature of absolute fact of fact itself is to begin with spiritual reality 
das geistige Wesen, and its mode of consciousness is here a formal knowledge of that reality, a knowledge which is occupied with the varied and manifold content thereof. This consciousness is still, in point of fact, a particular individual distinct from the general substance, and either prescribes arbitrary laws or pretends to possess within its own knowledge as such the laws as they absolutely are, an und für sich, and takes itself to be the power that passes judgment on them. Or again, looked at from the side of the substance, this is seen to be the self-contained and self-sufficient spiritual reality, which is not yet a consciousness of its own self the self-contained and self-sufficient reality however which is at once aware of being actual in the form of consciousness and presents itself to itself is spirit its essential spiritual being wesen has been above designated as the ethical substance spirit however is concrete ethical actuality wirklichkeit spirit is the self of the actual consciousness to which spirit stands opposed or rather which appears over against itself as an objective actual world that has lost however all sense of strangeness for the self just as the self has lost all sense of having a dependent or independent existence by itself cut off and separated from that world being substance and universal self-identical permanent essence wesen, spirit is the immovable irreducible basis and the starting point for the action of all and every one it is their purpose and their goal because the ideally implicit nature ansich, of all self-consciousnesses this substance is likewise the universal product wrought and created by the action of each and all and giving them unity and likeness and identity of meaning for it is self-existence für sich sein, the self-action qua substance spirit is unbending righteous self-sameness self-identity but qua for itself self-existent and self-determined für sich sein, its continuity is resolved into discrete elements it is the self-sacrificing soul of goodness the benevolent essential nature in which each fulfils his own special work rends the continuum of the universal substance and takes his own share of it this resolution of the essence into individual forms is just the aspect of the separate action and the separate self of all the several individuals it is the moving soul of the ethical substance the resultant universal spiritual being just because this substance is a being resolved in the self it is not a lifeless essence but actual and alive spirit is thus the self-supporting absolutely real ultimate being wesen. all the previous modes of consciousness are abstractions from it they are constituted by the fact that spirit analyzes itself distinguishes its moments and halts at each individual mode in turn the isolating of such moment presupposes spirit itself and requires spirit for its subsistence in other words this isolation of modes only exists within spirit which is existence taken in isolation they appear as if they existed as they stand but their advance and return upon their real ground and essential being show that they are merely moments or vanishing quantities and this essential being is precisely this movement and resolution of these moments here where spirit the reflection of these moments into itself has become established our reflection may briefly recall them in this connection they were consciousness self-consciousness and reason spirit is thus consciousness in general which contains sense experience perception and understanding so far as in analyzing its own self it holds fast by the moment of being a reality objective to itself and by abstraction eliminates the fact that this reality is its own self objectified its own self-existence when again it holds fast by the other abstract moment produced by analysis the fact that its object is its own self becomes objective to itself is its self-existence then it is self-consciousness but as immediate consciousness of its inherent and its explicit being of its immanent self and its objective self as the unity of consciousness and self-consciousness it is that type of consciousness which has reason it is the consciousness which as the word have indicates has the object in a shape which is implicitly and inherently rational or is categorized but in such a way that the object is not yet taken by the consciousness in question to have the value of a category spirit here is that consciousness from the immediately preceding consideration of which we have arrived at the present stage finally when this reason which spirit has is seen by spirit to be reason which actually is to be reason which is actual in spirit and is its world then the spirit has come to its truth it is spirit the essential nature of ethical life actually existent spirit so far as it is the immediate truth is the ethical life of a nation 
the individual which is a world it has to advance to the consciousness of what it is immediately it has to abandon and transcend the beautiful simplicity of ethical life and get to a knowledge of itself by passing through a series of stages and forms the distinction between these and those that have gone before consists in their being real spiritual individualities geister actualities proper and instead of being forms of consciousness they are forms of a world the living ethical world is spirit in its truth as it first comes to an abstract knowledge of its essential nature ethical life Sittlichkeit, is destroyed in the formal universality of right or legality recht. spirit being now sundered within itself traces one of its worlds in the elements of its objectivity as in a crass solid actuality this is the realm of culture and civilization while over against this in the element of thought is traced the world of belief or faith the realm of the inner life and truth wesen. both worlds however when in the grip of the notion when grasped by spirit which after this loss of self through self diremption penetrates itself are thrown into confusion and revolutionized through individual insight einsicht and the general diffusion of this attitude known as the enlightenment aufklärung and the realm which had thus been divided and expanded into the present and the remote beyond into the here and the yonder turns back into self-consciousness this self-consciousness again taking now the form of morality the inner moral life apprehends itself as the essential truth and the real essence as its actual self no longer puts its world and its ground and basis away outside itself but lets everything fade into itself and in the form of conscience gewissen is spirit sure and certain gewiss of itself the ethical world the world rent asunder into the here and the yonder and the moral point of view moralische weltanschauung are then individual forms of spirit geister whose process and whose return into the self of spirit a simple self and self-existent für sich sein, will be developed when these attain their goal and final result the actual self-consciousness of absolute spirit will make its appearance end of section one section two of the phenomenology of mind volume two by george wilhelm friedrich hegel translated by james black bailey this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phone chapter six a objective spirit the ethical order spirit in its ultimate simple truth is consciousness and breaks asunder its moments from one another an act divides spirit into spiritual substance on the one side and consciousness of the substance on the other and divides the substance as well as consciousness the substance appears in the shape of a universal inner nature and purpose standing in contrast to itself qua particularized reality the middle or mediating term infinite in character is self-consciousness which being implicitly the unity of itself and that substance becomes so now explicitly für sich unites the universal inner nature and its particular realization raises the latter to the former and becomes ethical action and on the other hand brings the former down to the latter and carries out the purpose the substance presented merely in thought in this way it brings to light the unity of itself and the substance and produces this unity in the form of a work done and thus as actual concrete fact wirklichkeit when consciousness breaks up into these elements the simple substance has in part preserved the attitude of opposition to self-consciousness in part it thereby manifests in itself the very nature of consciousness which consists in distinguishing its own content within itself manifests a world articulated into separate areas the substance is thus an ethical being split up into distinct elemental forms a human and a divine law in the same way the self-consciousness appearing over against the substance assigns itself in virtue of its inner nature to one of these powers and qua involving knowledge gets broken up into ignorance of what it is doing on the one hand and knowledge of this on the other a knowledge which for that reason proves a deception it learns therefore through its own act at once the contradictory nature of those powers into which the inner substance divided itself and their mutual overthrow as well as the contradiction between its knowledge of the ethical character of its act and what is truly and essentially ethical and so find its own destruction in point of fact however the ethical substance has by this process become actual concrete self-consciousness 
in other words this particular self has become self-sufficient and self-dependent an und für sich seienden but precisely thereby the ethical order has been overthrown and destroyed end of section two recording by phone section three of the phenomenology of mind volume two by george wilhelm friedrich hegel translated by james black bailey this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phone chapter six a subsection a the ethical world law human and divine man and woman translator's note the first step in the analysis of spirit is to take spirit as a realized actual social order immediately given as a historical fact and present directly to the minds of the individuals composing it this is social life as an established routine of human adjustments where the natural characteristics and constitution of its moral individuals are absorbed and built into the single substance of the living social whole it is spirit as an objectively embodied whole of essentially spiritual individuals without any consciousness of opposition to one another or to the whole and with an absolute unbroken sense of their own security and fulfilment within the substance of social mind it is spirit at the level of naive acquiescence in the law and order of conventional life but such a self-complete type of experience has various levels of realization it cannot exist except through the union of opposing elements and the central principle of all experience self-consciousness which assumes here such a concrete form has abundant material on which to exercise its function of creating and uniting distinctions the first level is determined by the fact that the substance of social life is constituted out of the quasi-natural phenomena of human genus and species of race and nationality on the one hand and the purely natural element of specialized individual sex on the other these two aspects go together the sex relations of individuals maintain race and nationality the nation lives in and through its sexually distinct individuals the social order as an order is realized and maintained in the medium of these elements the fact that this order is an order of universal mind gives it a permanence an inviolability an absoluteness which are inseparable from it so inseparable that the order is looked on as having its roots in the absolute mind and as deriving its authority from it the social order on this aspect consists of a divinely established and divinely sanctioned regime the gods are the guardians of the city of the hearth and the home on the other hand the expression of this order varies and is enunciated from time to time in the history of a community the order in this sense is made by man the law of the social order thus becomes a human law determined by human conditions and human ends it is a round of conventions and customs these two forms of order are inseparable in the life of a community and they subsist together and side by side at this level of social consciousness they may lead to conflict in the life of the individual in the community and have to be reconciled by force or otherwise and they become associated and connected with the fundamental differences of individuality above referred to the analysis of this level of social life constituted as above furnishes the argument of the following section end of translator's note the ethical world law human and divine man and woman the simple substance of spirit being consciousness divides itself into parts in other words just as consciousness of abstract sensuous existence passes over into perception so does immediate certainty of real ethical existence and just as for sense perception bare being becomes a thing with many properties so for ethical perception a given act becomes a reality involving many ethical relations for the former again the unnecessary plurality of properties concentrates itself into the form of an essential opposition between individual and universal and still more for the latter which is consciousness purified and substantial the plurality of ethical moments is reduced to and assumes a twofold form that of a law of individuality and a law of universality each of these areas or masses of the substance remains however spirit in its entirety if in sense perception things have no other substantial reality than the two determinations of individual and universal these determinations express in the present instance merely the superficial opposition of both sides to one another individuality in the case of the subject wesen we are here considering has the significance of self-consciousness in general 
not of any particular consciousness we care to take the ethical substance is thus in this determination actual concrete substance absolute spirit realized in the plurality of distinct consciousnesses definitely existing it this spirit is the community gemeinwesen which as we entered the stage of the practical embodiment of reason in general came before us as the absolute and ultimate reality and which here comes objectively before itself in its true nature as a conscious ethical reality wesen, and as the essential reality for that mode of consciousness we are now dealing with it is spirit which is for itself since it maintains itself by being reflected in the minds of the component individuals and which is in itself or substance since it preserves them within itself qua actual substance that spirit is a nation volk qua concrete consciousness it is the citizens of a nation this consciousness has its essential being in simple spirit and is certain of itself in the actual realization of the spirit in the entire nation it has its truth there directly not therefore in something unreal but in a spirit which exists and makes itself felt this spirit can be named human law because it has its being essentially in the form of self-conscious actuality in the form of universality that spirit is law known to everybody familiar and recognized and is every day present customary convention Sitte. in the form of particularity it is the concrete certainty of itself in any and every individual and the certainty of itself as a single individuality is that spirit in the form of government its true and complete nature is seen in its authoritative validity openly and unmistakably manifested an existence which takes the form of unconstrained independent objective fact and is immediately apprehended with conscious certainty in this form over against this power and publicity of the ethical secular human order there appears however another power the divine law for the ethical power of the state being the movement of self-conscious action finds its opposition in the simple immediate essential being of the moral order qua actual concrete universality it is a force exerted against the independence of the individual and qua actuality in general it finds inherent in that essential being something other than the power of the state we mentioned before that each of the opposite ways in which the ethical substance exists contains that substance in its entirety and contains all moments of its contents if then the community is that substance in the form of self-consciously realized action the other side has the form of immediate or directly existent substance the latter is thus on the one hand the inner principle the grief or universal possibility of the ethical order in general but on the other hand contains within it also the moment of self-consciousness this moment which expresses the ethical order in this element of immediacy or mere being which in other words is an immediate consciousness of self both as regards its essence and its particular thisness in an other and hence is a natural ethical community this is the family the family as the inner indwelling principle of sociality operating in an unconscious way stands opposed to its own actuality when explicitly conscious as the basis of the actuality of a nation it stands in contrast to the nation itself as the immediate ethical existence it stands over against the ethical order which shapes and preserves itself by work for universal ends the penance of the family stand in contrast to the universal spirit although the ethical existence of the family has the character of immediacy it is within itself an ethical entity but not so far as it is the natural relation of its component members or so far as their connection is one immediately holding between individual concrete beings for the ethical element is intrinsically universal and this relation established by nature is essentially just as much a spiritual fact and is only ethical by being spiritual let us see wherein its peculiar ethical character consists in the first place because the ethical element is the intrinsically universal element the ethical relation between the members of the family is not that of sentiment or the relationship of love the ethical element in this case seems bound to be placed in the relation of the individual member of the family to the entire family as the real substance so that the purpose of his action and the content of his actuality are taken from this substance are derived solely from the family life but the conscious purpose which dominates the action of this whole so far as that purpose concerns that whole is itself the individual member the procuring and maintaining of power and wealth turn in part merely on needs and wants 
and are a matter that has to do with desire in part they become in their higher aspect something which is merely of mediate significance this aspect does not fall within the family itself but concerns what is truly universal the community it acts rather in a negative way on the family and consists in setting the individual outside the family in subduing his mere natural existence and his mere particularity and so drawing him on towards virtue towards living in and for the whole the positive purpose peculiar to the family is the individual as such now in order that this relationship may be ethical neither the individual who does an act nor he to whom the act refers must show any trace of contingency such as obtains in rendering some particular help or service the contents of the ethical act must be substantial in character or must be entire and universal hence it can only stand in relation to the entire individual to the individual qua universal and this again must not be taken as if it were merely in idea that an act of service furthered his entire happiness whereas the service taken as an immediate or concrete act only does something particular in regard to him nor must we think that the service really takes him as its object and deals with him as a whole in a series of efforts as if it were a process of education and produces him as a kind of work where apart from the purpose which operates in a negative way on the family the real act has merely a limited content finally just as little should we take it that the service rendered is a help in time of need by which in truth the entire individual is saved for it is itself an entirely casual act which can as well be as not be the occasion of which is an ordinary actuality the act then which embraces the entire existence of the blood relation does not concern the citizen for he does not belong to the family nor does it deal with one who is going to be a citizen and so will cease to have the significance of a mere particular individual it has as its object and content this specific individual belonging to the family takes him as a universal being divested of his sensuous or particular reality the act no longer concerns the living but the dead one who has passed through the long sequence of his broken and diversified existence and gathered up his being into its one completed embodiment who has lifted himself out of the unrest of a life of chance and change into the peace of simple universality because it is only as citizen that he is real and substantial the individual when not a citizen and belonging to the family is merely unreal insubstantial shadow this condition of universality which the individual as such reaches is mere being death it is the immediate issue of a natural process and is not the action of a conscious mind the duty of the member of a family is on that account to attach this aspect to in order that this last phase of being also this universal being may not belong to nature alone and remain something irrational but may be something actually done and the right of consciousness be asserted in it or rather the significance of the act is that because in truth the peace and universality of a self-conscious being does not belong to nature the apparent claim which nature has made to act in this way may be given up and the truth reinstated what nature did in the individual's case concerns the aspect in which his process of becoming universal is manifested as the movement of an existent it takes effect no doubt within the ethical community and has this in view as its purpose death is the fulfilment and final task which the individual as such undertakes on its behalf but so far as he is essentially a particular individual it is an accident that his death was connected directly with his labour for the universal whole and was the outcome of his toil partly because if it was so it is the natural course of the negativity of the individual qua existent in which consciousness does not return into itself and become self-conscious or again because since the process of the existent consists in becoming cancelled and transcended and attaining the stage of independent self-existence death is the aspect of diremption where the self-existence which is obtained is something other than that being which entered on the process because the ethical order is spirit in its immediate truth those aspects into which its conscious life breaks up falls also into this form of immediacy and the individual's particularity passes over into this abstract negativity which being in itself without consolation or reconcilement must perceive them essentially through a concrete and external act blood relationship therefore supplements the abstract natural process by adding to it the process of consciousness by interrupting the work of nature and rescuing the blood relation from destruction 
or better because destruction the passing into mere being is necessary it takes upon itself the act of destruction through this it comes about that the universal being the sphere of death is also something which has returned into itself something self-existent the powerless bare particular unity is raised to universal individuality the dead individual by his having detached and liberated his being from his action or his negative unity is an empty particular merely existing passively for some other at the mercy of every lower irrational organic agency and the chemical physical forces of abstract material elements both of which are now stronger than himself the former on account of the life which they have the latter on account of their negative nature the family keeps away from the dead this dishonouring of him by the desires of unconscious organic agencies and by abstract elements puts its own action in place of theirs and weds the relative to the bosom of the earth the elemental individuality that passes not away thereby the family makes the dead a member of a community which prevails over and holds under control the powers of the particular material elements and the lower living creatures which sought to have their way with the dead and destroy him this last duty thus accomplishes the complete divine law or constitutes the positive ethical act towards the given individual every other relation towards him which does not remain at the level of love but is ethical belongs to human law and has the negative significance of lifting the individual above the confinement within the natural community to which he belongs as a concrete individual but now though human right has for its content and power the actual ethical substance consciously aware of itself the entire nation while divine right and law derive theirs from the particular individual who is beyond the actual yet he is still not without power his power lies in the abstract pure universal the shadowy individual which seizes upon the individuality that cuts itself loose from the element and constitutes the self-conscious reality of the nation and draws it back into the pure abstraction which is the essential nature of the shadowy individual while at the same time the latter is its ultimate ground as well how this power is made explicit in the nation itself will come out more fully as we proceed now in the one law as in the other there are differences and stages for since these laws involve the element of consciousness in both cases distinction is developed within themselves and this is just what constitutes the peculiar process of their life the consideration of these differences brings out the way they operate and the kind of self-consciousness at work in both the universal essential principles wesen, of the ethical world has also their connection and transition into one another the community the higher law whose validity is open to the light of day makes its concrete activity felt in government for in government it is an individual whole government is concrete actual spirit reflected into itself the self pure and simple of the entire ethical substance this simple force allows indeed the community to unfold and expand into its component members and to give each part subsistence and self-existence of its own für sich sein. spirit finds in this way its realization or its objective existence and the family is the medium in which this realization takes effect but spirit is at the same time the force of the whole combining these parts again within the unity which negates them giving them the feeling of their want of independence and keeping them aware that their life only lies in the whole the community may thus on the other hand organize itself into the systems of property and of personal independence of personal right and right in things and on the other hand articulate the various ways of working for what in the first instance are particular ends those of gain and enjoyment into their own special guilds and associations and may thus make them independent the spirit of universal assemblage and association is the single and simple principle and the negative essential factor at work in the segregation and isolation of these systems in order not to let them get rooted and settled in this isolation and thus break up the whole into fragments and let the common spirit evaporate government has from time to time to shake them to the very centre by war by this means it confounds the order that has been established and arranged and violates that right to independence while the individuals who being absorbed therein get adrift from the whole striving after inviolable self-existence and personal security are made by the task thus imposed on them by government to feel the power of their lord and master death 
by thus breaking up the form of fixed stability spirit guards the ethical order from sinking into merely natural existence preserves the self of which it is conscious and raises that self to the level of freedom and its own powers the negative essential being shows itself to be the might proper of the community and the force it has for its self-maintenance the community therefore finds the true principle and corroboration of its power in the inner nature of divine law and in the kingdom of the nether world the divine law which holds sway in the family has also on its side distinctions within itself the realizations among which make up the living process of its realization amongst the three relationships however of husband and wife parents and children brothers and sisters the relationship of husband and wife is to begin with the primary and immediate form in which one consciousness recognizes itself in another and in which each finds reciprocal recognition being natural self-knowledge knowledge of self on the basis of nature and not on that of ethical life it merely represents and typifies in a figure the life of spirit and is not spirit itself actually realized this figurative representation however gets its realization in another than it is this relationship therefore finds itself realized not in itself as such but in the child an other in whose coming into being that relationship consists and with which it passes away and this change from one generation onwards to another is permanent in and as the life of a nation the reverent devotion the etate, of husband and wife towards one another is thus mixed up with a natural relation and with feeling and their relationship is not inherently self-complete similarly too the second relationship the reverent devotion of parents and children to one another the devotion of parents towards their children is affected and disturbed just by its being consciously realized in what is external to themselves that is the children and by seeing them become something on their own account without this returning to the parents independent existence on the part of the children remains a foreign reality a reality all their own the devotion of children again towards their parents is conversely affected by their coming into being from or having their essential nature in what is external to themselves that is the parents and passes away and by their attaining independent existence and the self-consciousness of their own solely through a separation from the source whence they came a separation in which the spring gets exhausted both these relationships are constituted by and hold within the transience and the dissimilarity of the two sides which are assigned to them an unmixed intransitive form of relationship however holds between brother and sister they are the same blood which however in them has entered into a condition of stable equilibrium they therefore stand in no such natural relation as husband and wife they do not desire one another nor have they given to one another nor received from one another this independence of individual being they are free individualities with respect to each other the feminine element therefore in the form of the sister premonizes and foreshadows most completely the nature of ethical life she does not become conscious of it and does not actualize it because the law of the family is her inherent implicit inward nature which does not lie open to the daylight of consciousness but remains inner feeling and the divine element exempt from actuality the feminine life is attached to these household divinities penates, and sees in them both her universal substance and her particular individuality yet so views them that this relation of her particular being to them is at the same time not the natural one of pleasure as a daughter the woman must now see her parents pass away with natural emotion and yet with ethical resignation for it is only at the cost of this condition that she can come to that individual existence of which she is capable she thus cannot see her independent existence positively attained in her relation to her parents the relationships of mother and wife however are individualized partly in the form of something natural which brings pleasure partly in the form of something negative which finds simply its own evanescence in those relationships partly again the individualization is just on that account something contingent which can be replaced by an other particular individuality in a household of the ethical kind a woman's relationship are not based on a reference to this particular husband this particular child but to a husband to children in general not to feeling but to the universal the distinction between her ethical life 
while it determines her particular existence and brings her pleasure and that of her husband consists just in this that it has always a directly universal significance for her and is quite alien to the impulsive condition of mere particular desire on the other hand in the husband these two aspects get separated and since he possesses as a citizen the self-conscious power belonging to the universal life the life of the social whole he acquires thereby the rights of desire and keeps himself at the same time in detachment from it so far then as particularity is implicated in this relationship in the case of the wife her ethical life is not purely ethical so far however as it is ethical the particularity is a matter of indifference and the wife is without the moment of knowing herself as this particular self in and through another the brother however is in the eyes of the sister a being whose nature is unperturbed by desire and is ethically like her own her recognition in him is pure and unmixed with any sexual relation the indifference characteristic of particular existence and the ethical contingency thence arising are therefore not present in this relationship instead the moment of individual selfhood recognizing and being recognized can here assert its right because it is bound up with the balance and equilibrium resulting from their being of the same blood and from their being related in a way that involves no mutual desire the loss of a brother is thus irreparable to the sister and her duty towards him is the highest this relationship at the same time is the limit at which the circumscribed life of the family is broken up and passes beyond itself the brother is the member of the family in whom its spirit becomes individualized and enabled thereby to turn towards another sphere towards what is other than and external to itself and pass over into a consciousness of universality the brother leaves this immediate rudimentary and therefore strictly speaking negative ethical life of the family in order to acquire and produce the concrete ethical order which is conscious of itself he passes from the divine law within whose realm he lived over to the human law the sister however becomes or the wife remains director of the home and the preserver of the divine law in this way both the sexes overcome their merely natural being and become ethically significant as diverse forms dividing between them the different aspects which the ethical substance possesses both these universal factors of the ethical world have their specific individuality in naturally distinct self-consciousnesses for the reason that the spirit at work in the ethical order is the immediate unity of the substance of ethical life with self-consciousness an immediacy which thus appears as the existence of a natural difference at once as regards its aspect of reality and of difference it is that aspect which in the notion of spiritual reality came to light as original determinate nature when we were dealing with the stage of individuality which is real to itself this moment loses the indeterminateness which it still has there and the contingent diversity of constitution and capacities it is now the specific opposition of the two sexes whose natural character acquires at the same time the significance of their respective ethical determinations the distinction of the sexes and of their ethical content remains all the same within the unity of the ethical substance and its operation is just a constant process of that substance the husband is sent forth by the spirit of the family into the life of the community and finds there his self-conscious reality just as the family thereby finds in the community its universal substance and subsistence conversely the community finds in the family the formal element of its own realization and in the divine law its power and confirmation neither of the two is alone self-complete human law as a living and active principle proceeds from the divine the law holding on earth from that of the netherworld the conscious from the unconscious mediation from immediacy and returns to whence it came the power of the netherworld on the other hand finds its realization upon earth it comes through consciousness to have existence and efficacy the universal elements of the ethical life are thus the ethical substance qua universal and that substance qua particular consciousness their universal actuality is the nation and the family while they get their natural self and their operative individuality in man and woman here in this content of the ethical world we see attained those purposes which the previous insubstantial modes of conscious life set before them what reason apprehended only as an object has become self-consciousness 
and what self-consciousness merely contains within it is here explicit true reality what observation knew an object given externally and picked up and one in the constitution of which the subject knowing had no share is here a given ethical condition a custom found lying ready at hand but a reality which is at the same time the deed and the product of the subject finding it the individual who seeks the pleasure of enjoying his particular individuality finds it in the family life and the necessity in which that pleasure passes away is his own self-consciousness as a citizen of his nation or again it is knowing the law of his own heart as the law of all hearts knowing the consciousness of self to be recognized and universal ordinance of society it is virtue which enjoys the fruit of its own sacrifice which brings about what it sets out to do that is to bring the essential nature into the light of the actual present and its enjoyment lies in this universal life finally consciousness of fact as such der sache selbst gets satisfaction in the real substance which contains and maintains in positive form the abstract aspects of that empty category that substance finds a genuine content in the powers of the ethical order a content that takes the place of those insubstantial commands which the healthy human reason wanted to give and to know and in consequence thus gets a concrete inherently determinate standard for testing not the laws but what is done the whole is a stable equilibrium of all the parts and each part a spirit in its native element a spirit which does not seek its satisfaction beyond itself but has the satisfaction within itself for the reason that itself is in this balanced equipoise with the whole this condition of stable equilibrium can of course only be living by inequality arising within it and being brought back again to equipoise by righteousness and justice justice however is neither an alien principle wesen, holding somewhere remote from the present nor the realization unworthy of the name of justice of mutual malice treachery ingratitude etc which in the unintelligent way of chance and accident would fulfil the law by a kind of irrational connection without any controlling idea action by commission and omission without any consciousness of what was involved on the contrary being justice and human law it brings back to the whole to the universal life of society what has broken away separately from the harmony and equilibrium of the whole the independent classes and individuals in this way justice is the government of the nation and is its all-pervading essential life in a consciously present individual form and is the personal self-conscious will of all that justice however which restores the equilibrium the universal when getting the mastery over the particular individual is similarly the simple single spirit of the individual who has suffered wrong it is not broken up into the two elements one who has suffered wrong and a far away remote reality reason. the individual himself is the power of the nether world and that reality is his fury wreaking vengeance upon him for his individuality his blood still lives in the house his substance has a lasting actuality the wrong which can be brought upon the individual in the realm of the ethical world consists merely in this that a bare something by chance happens to him the power which perpetrates on the conscious individual this wrong of making him into a mere thing is nature it is the universality not of the community but the abstract universality of mere existence and the particular individual in wiping out the wrong suffered turns not against the community for he has not suffered at its hands but against the latter as we saw those who consciously share the blood of the individual remove this wrong in such a way that what has happened becomes rather a work of their own doing and hence bare existence the last state is also to be something willed and thus an object of gratification the ethical realm remains in this way permanently a world without blot or stain a world untainted by any internal dissension so too its process is an untroubled transition from one of its powers to the other in such a way that each preserves and produces the other we see it no doubt divided into two ultimate elements and their realization but their opposition is rather the confirming and substantiation of one through the other and where they directly come in contact and affect each other as actual factors their mediating common element straightway permeates and suffuses the one with the other the one extreme universal spirit conscious of itself becomes through the individuality of man 
linked together with its other extreme its force and its element with unconscious spirit on the other hand divine law is individualized the unconscious spirit of the particular individual finds its existence in woman through the mediation of whom the spirit of the individual comes out of its unrealizedness into actuality out of the state of unknowing and unknown and rises into the conscious realm of universal spirit the union of man with woman constitutes the operative mediating agency for the whole and constitutes the element which while separated into the extremes of divine and human law is at the same time their immediate union this union again turns both the first mediate connections schlusse into one and the same sentences and unites into one process the twofold movement in opposite directions one from reality to unreality the downward movement of human law organized into independent members to the danger and trial of death the other from unreality to reality the upward movement of the law of the netherworld to the daylight of conscious existence of these movements the former falls to man the latter to woman end of section three recording by phone section four of the phenomenology of mind volume two by george wilhelm friedrich hegel translated by james black bailey this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by phone. Chapter 6a, Subsection B. Ethical Action, Knowledge, Human and Divine, Guilt and Destiny. Translator's Note. A fundamental condition of social order is that it is maintained by action on the part of the individual members of a society. Action is a fundamental principle of distinction between individuals, is the way they make their contribution to social life, and is also the way by which the continuance of social life is ceaselessly broken and reconstituted. In a comprehensive sense, therefore, action is the principle by which distinction in unity is carried out in social life. The consideration of its significance is thus an essential problem for the analysis of social mind action must be considered at once with reference to individuality and also with reference to those conceptions of social order as containing both divine and human law in the following section this analysis is undertaken the specific historical background of hegel's thought in this section and to some extent in the preceding section is supplied by the social life of the greek city-state the greek city-state has been taken as the type so to say of spiritual existence realized as a self-complete ethical order but the social life of greece is here in large measure read and interpreted in the light of the dramatization of greek ethical conceptions by the great greek tragedians especially sophocles this accounts for the repeated reference to the purely dramatic conception of the destiny or the pathic element in the life of the individual whose spiritual existence is completely bound up with the established social order it is in greece that we find most fully realized the all-sufficiency of the state for the individual which hegel has here in view a sufficiency which was at once the strength and beauty as well as the pathos and weakness of greek social life with this and the preceding section should be read hegel's philosophy of history part two the greek world end of translator's note ethical action knowledge human and divine guilt and destiny in the form presented by the opposition of elements in the realm just dealt with self-consciousness has not yet come to its rights as a particular individuality individuality there has on one side the sense of merely universal will on the other of consanguinity of the family this particular individual has merely the significance of shadowy unreality there is as yet no performance of an act the act however is the realized self it breaks in upon the untroubled stable organization and movement of the ethical world what there appears as ordinance and harmony between both its constituent elements each of which confirms and complements the other becomes through the performing of an act a transition of opposites into one another by which each proves to be the annihilation rather than the confirmation of itself and its opposite it becomes the process of negation or destruction the eternal necessity of awful destiny which engulfs in the abyss of its bare identity divine and human law alike as well as both the self-conscious factors in which these powers subsist and to our view 
passes over into the absolute self-existence of mere particular self-consciousness the basis from which this movement proceeds and on which it takes effect is the kingdom of the ethical order but the activity at work in this process is self-consciousness being ethical consciousness it is the pure and simple direction of activity towards the essential principle of the ethical life it is duty there is no caprice and likewise no struggle no indecision in it since it has given up legislating and testing laws the essential ethical principle is for it something immediate unwavering without contradiction there is therefore neither the painful spectacle of finding itself in a collision between passion and duty nor the comic spectacle of a collision between duty and duty a collision which so far as content goes is the same as that between passion and duty for passion can also be presented as a duty because duty when consciousness withdraws into itself and leaves its immediate essential substance wesenheit comes to be the formal universal into which one content fits equally well with another as we found before the collision of duties is however comical because it brings out the contradiction inherent in the idea of an absolute standing opposed to another absolute expresses something absolute and then directly the annihilation of this so-called absolute or duty the ethical consciousness however knows not what it has to do and is decided whether it is to belong to divine or human law this directness which characterizes its decision is something immanent and inherent ansichsein and hence has at the same time the significance of a natural condition of being as we saw nature not the accident of circumstances or choice assigns one sex to one law the other to the other law or conversely both the ethical powers themselves establish their individual existence and actualization in the two sexes thus then because on the one side the ethical order consists essentially in this immediate directness of decision and therefore only the one law is for consciousness the essential reality while on the other side the powers of the ethical order are actual in the self of conscious life in this way these forces acquire the significance of excluding one another and of being opposed to one another they are explicit in self-consciousness just as they were merely implicit in the realm of the ethical order the ethical consciousness because it is decisively on the side of one of them is essentially character there is not for it equal essentiality in both the opposition therefore appears as an unfortunate collision of duty merely with reality on which right has no hold the ethical consciousness is qua self-consciousness in this opposition and being so it at once proceeds either to subdue by force this reality opposing it to the law which it accepts or to get round this reality by craft since it sees right only on its own side and wrong on the other so of these two that which belongs to the divine law detects on the other side mere arbitrary fortuitous human violence while what appertains to human law finds in the other the obstinacy and disobedience of subjective self-sufficiency for the commands of government have a universal sense and meaning open to the light of day the will of the other law however is the inner concealed meaning of the realm of darkness unterirdisch a meaning which appears expressed as the will of a particular being and in contradicting the first is malicious offence there arises in this way a consciousness to the opposition between what is known and what is not known just as in the case of substance there was an opposition between the conscious and the unconscious and the absolute right of ethical self-consciousness comes into conflict with the divine right of the essential reality self-consciousness qua consciousness takes the objective actuality as such to have essential being looking at its substance however it is the unity of itself and this opposite and the ethical self-consciousness is consciousness of that substance the object qua opposed to self-consciousness has therefore entirely lost the characteristic of having essential being by itself just as the spheres of conscious life where the object is merely a thing are long past and gone so too are these spheres where consciousness sets up and establishes something from out itself and turns a particular moment into the essential reality wesen. against such one-sidedness actual concrete reality has a power of its own it takes the side of truth against consciousness and shows consciousness itself what the truth is the ethical consciousness however has drunk from the cup of the absolute substance 
forgotten all the one-sidedness of isolating self-existence all its purpose and peculiar notions and has therefore at the same time drowned in the stygian stream all essentiality of nature and all the independence claimed by the objective reality its absolute right therefore when it acts in accordance with ethical law is to find in this actualization nothing else than the fulfilment and performance of this law itself and that the deeds should manifest nothing but ethical action the ethical being absolute essence and absolute power at once cannot endure any perversion of its content if it were merely absolute essence without power it might undergo perversion at the hands of individuality but this latter being ethical consciousness has renounced all perverting when it gave up its one-sided subjectivity sein. conversely again mere power might be perverted by the essential reality if power were still a subjectivity of that kind on account of this unity individuality is a pure form of the substance which is the content and action consists in transition from thought over into reality merely as the process of an unreal opposition whose movements have no special and particular content distinct from one another and no essential nature of their own the absolute right of ethical consciousness is therefore that the deed the mode and form of its realization should be nothing else than it knows it to be but the essential ethical reality has split asunder into two laws and consciousness taking up an undivided single attitude towards law is assigned only to one just as this simple consciousness takes its stand on the absolute right that the essential reality has appeared to it qua ethical as that reality inherently is so too this essence insists on the right belonging to its reality that is the right of having a double form this right of the essential reality does not however at the same time stand over against and oppose the self-consciousness as if it were to be found anywhere else rather it is the essential nature of self-consciousness only there has it its existence and its power and its opposition is the act of self-consciousness itself for the latter just because it is a self to itself and proceeds to act lifts itself out of the state of simple immediacy and itself sets up the division into two by the act it gives up the specific character of the ethical life that of being pure and simple certainty of immediate truth and sets up the division of itself into self as active and reality over against it and for it therefore negative by the act it thus becomes guilt for the deed is its doing and doing is its inmost nature and the guilt acquires also the meaning of crime for as simple ethical consciousness it has turned to and conformed itself to the one law but turned away from the other and thus has broken the latter by its deed guilt is not an external indifferent entity wesen, with the double meaning that the deed as actually manifested to the light of day may be an action of the guilty self or may not be so as if with the doing of it there could be connected something external and accidental that did not belong to it from which point of view therefore the action would be innocent rather the act is itself this diremption this affirming itself for itself and establishing over against this an alien external reality that such a result takes place is due to the deed itself and is the outcome of it hence innocence is an attribute merely of the want of action nicht tun, a state like the mere being of a stone and one which is not even true of a child looking at the content however the ethical act contains the element of wrongdoing because it does not cancel and transcend the natural allotment of the two laws to the two sexes but rather being an undivided attitude towards the law keeps within the sphere of natural immediacy and qua acting turns this one-sidedness into guilt by merely laying hold of one side of the essential reality and taking up a negative relation towards the other that is violating it where in the general ethical life guilt and crime deeds and actions come in will be more definitely brought out later meantime so much is at once clear that it is not this particular individual who acts and becomes guilty for he qua this particular self is merely a shadowy reality he is merely qua universal self and individuality is purely the formal aspect of doing anything at all while its content is the laws and customs which are determined for the individual 
the laws and customs of his class or station he is the substance qua genus which by its determinateness becomes no doubt a species but the specific form remains at the same time the generic universal self-consciousness within the life of a nation descends from the universal only down as far as specific particularity but not as far as the single individuality which sets up an exclusive self establishes in its action a reality negative to itself on the contrary the action of that self-consciousness rests on secure confidence in the whole into which there enters nothing alien or foreign neither fear nor hostility ethical self-consciousness now comes to find in its deed the full explicit meaning of concrete real action as much when it followed divine law as when it followed human the law manifest to it is in the essential reality bound up with its opposite the essential reality is the unity of both but the deed has merely carried out one as against the other but being bound up with this other in the inner reality the fulfilment of the one calls forth the other in the shape of something which having been violated and now become hostile demands revenge an attitude which the deed has made it take up in the case of action only one face of the decision is in general in evidence the decision however is inherently something negative which plans an other in opposition to it something foreign to the decision which is clear knowledge actual reality therefore keeps concealed within itself this other aspect alien to clear knowledge and does not show itself to consciousness as it fully and truly is an und für sich in the story of oedipus the son does not see his own father in the person of the man who has insulted him and whom he strikes to death nor his mother in the queen whom he makes his wife in this way a hidden power shunning the light of day waylays the ethical self-consciousness a power which bursts forth after the deed is done and seizes the doer in the act for the completed deed is the removal of the opposition between the knowing self and the reality over against it the ethical consciousness cannot disclaim the crime and its guilt the deed consists in setting in motion what was unmoved and in bringing out what in the first instance lay shut up as a mere possibility and thereby linking on the unconscious to the conscious the non-existent to the existent in this truth therefore the deed comes to the light it is something in which a conscious element is bound up with what is unconscious what is peculiarly one's own with what is alien and external it is an essential reality divided in sunder whose other aspect consciousness discovers and also finds to be its own aspect but as a power violated by its doing and roused to hostility against it it may well be that the right which kept itself in reserve is not in its peculiar form present to the consciousness of the doer but is merely implicit present in the subjective inward guilt of the decision and the action but the ethical consciousness is more complete its guilt purer if it knows beforehand the law and the power which it opposes if it takes them to be sheer violence and wrong to be a contingency in the ethical life and wittingly like antigone commits the crime the deed when accomplished transforms its point of view the very performance of it eo ipso expresses that what is ethical has to be actual for the realization of the purpose is the very purpose of acting acting expresses precisely the unity of reality and the substance it expresses the fact that actuality is not an accident for the essential element but that in union with that element is given to no right which is not true right on account of this actuality and on account of its deed ethical consciousness must acknowledge its opposite as its own actuality it must acknowledge its guilt because of our sufferings we acknowledge we have erred to acknowledge this is expressly to indicate that the severance between ethical purpose and actuality has been done away it means the return to the ethical frame of mind which knows that nothing counts but right thereby however the agent surrenders his character and the reality of his self and has utterly collapsed his being lies in belonging to his ethical law as his substance in acknowledging an opposite however he has ceased to find his substance in this law and instead of reality this has become an unreality a mere sentiment a frame of mind the substance no doubt appears as the pathic element in the individuality and the individuality appears as the factor which animates the substance and hence stands above it 
but the substance is a pathic element which is at the same time his character the ethical individuality is directly and inherently one with this its universal exists in it alone and is incapable of surviving the destruction which this ethical power suffers at the hand of its opposite this individuality however has all the same the certainty that that individuality whose pathic element is this opposite power the substance suffers no more harm than it has inflicted the opposition of the ethical powers to one another and the process of the individuality setting up these powers in life and action have reached their true end merely in the fact that both sides undergo the same destruction for neither of the powers has any advantage over the other that it should be a more essential moment of the substance common to both the fact of their being equally and to the same degree essential and subsisting independently beside each other means their having no separate self in the act they have a self-nature but a different self which contradicts the unity of the self and cancels their claim to independent right and thus brings about their necessary destruction character too in part looking at its pathic element the substance belongs to one alone in part when we look at the aspect of knowledge the one character like the other is divided into a conscious element and an unconscious and since each itself calls forth this opposition and the want of knowledge is by the act also its doing each falls into the guilt which consumes it the victory of one power and its character and the defeat of the other side would thus be merely the part and the incomplete work which steadily advances till the equilibrium between the two is attained it is in the equal suppression of both sides that absolute right is first accomplished and the ethical substance as the negative force devouring both sides in other words omnipotent and righteous destiny makes its appearance if both powers are taken according to their specific content and its individualization we have the scene presented of a contest between them as individuated on its formal side this is the struggle of the ethical order and of self-consciousness with unconscious nature and the contingency due to this nature the latter has a right as against the former because this is only objective spirit merely in immediate unity with its substance on the side of content the struggle is the rupture of divine and human law the youth goes forth from the unconscious life of the family and becomes the individuality of the community but that he still shares the natural life from which he has torn himself away is seen in the fact that he emerges therefrom only to find his claim affected by the contingency that there are two brothers who with equal right take possession of the community the inequality due to the one having been born earlier and the other later an inequality which is a natural difference has no importance for them when they enter the ethical life of society but government as the single soul the self of the national spirit does not admit of a duality of individuality and in contrast to the ethical necessity of this unity nature appears as by accident providing more than one these two brothers therefore become disunited and their equal right in regard to the power of the state is destructive to both for they are equally wrong humanly considered he has committed the crime who not being in actual possession seizes on a community at the head of which the other stood well again he has to right on his side who knew how to seize the other merely qua particular individual detached from the community and banish him while thus powerless out of the community he has merely laid hands on the individual as such not the community not the essential nature of human right the community attacked and defended from a point of view which is merely particular maintains itself and both brothers find their destruction reciprocally through one another for individuality which involves peril to the whole in the maintenance of its own self-existence fühl sich sein has thrust its own self out of the community and is disintegrated in its own nature the community however will do honour to the one who is found on its side the government the re-established singleness of the self of the community will punish by depriving of the last honour him who already proclaimed its devastation on the walls of the city he who came to affront the highest spiritual form of conscious life the spirit of the community must be stripped of the honour of his entire and complete nature the honour due to the spirit of the departed 
but if the universal thus lightly knocks off the highest point of its pyramid and doubtless triumphs victoriously over the family the rebellious principle of individuation it has thereby merely put itself into conflict with divine law the self-conscious with the unconscious spirit for the latter this unconscious spirit is the other essential power and therefore the power undestroyed but only insulted by the former it finds however only a bloodless shade to lend it help toward actually carrying itself out in the face of that masterful and openly enunciated law being the law of weakness and of darkness it therefore gives way to begin with before law which has force and publicity for the strength of the former is effective in the nether realm not on earth and in the light of day but the actual and concrete which has taken away from what is inward its honour and its power has thereby consumed its own real nature the spirit which is manifest to the light of day has the roots of its power in the lower world the certainty felt by a nation a certainty of which it is sure and which makes itself assured finds the truth of its oath binding all its members into one solely in the mute unconscious substance of all in the waters of forgetfulness in consequence the fulfilment of the public spirit turns round into its opposite and learns that its supreme right is supreme wrong its victory rather its own defeat the slain whose right is injured knows therefore how to find means of vengeance which are of the same reality and strength as the power at whose hands it has suffered these powers are other communities whose altars the dogs or birds defiled with the corpse of the dead which is not raised into unconscious universality by being restored as is its due due to the ultimate individuum the elemental earth but instead has remained above ground in the sphere of reality and has now received as the force of divine law a self-conscious actual universality they rise up in hostility and destroy the community which has dishonoured and destroyed its own power the sacred claims the piety of the family represented in this way the movement of human and divine law finds the expression of its necessity in individuals in whom the universal appears as a pathic element and the activity of the movement as action of individuals which gives the appearance of contingency to the necessity of the process but individuality and its action constitute the principle of individuation in general a principle which in its pure universality was called inner divine law as a moment of the visible community it does not merely exhibit that unconscious activity of the netherworld its operation is not simple external in its existence it has an equally manifest visible existence and process actual in the actual nation taken in this form what was represented as a simple process of the pathic element as embodied in individuals assumes another look and crime and the resulting ruin of the community assume the proper form of their existence human law then in its universal mode of existence is the community in its efficient operation in general is the manhood of the community in its actual efficient operation is government it has its being its process and its subsistence by consuming and absorbing into itself the separatist action of the household gods penates the individualization into insular independent families which are under the management of womankind and by keeping them dissolved in the fluent continuum of its own nature the family at the same time however is in general its element the individual consciousness its universal operative bias since the community gets itself subsistence only by breaking in upon family happiness and dissolving individual self-consciousness into the universal it creates its enemy for itself within its own gates creates it in what it suppresses and what is at the same time essential to it womankind in general womankind the everlasting irony in the life of the community changes by intrigue the universal purpose of government into a private end transforms its universal activity into a work of this or that specific individual and perverts the universal property of the state into a possession and ornament for the family woman in this way turns to ridicule the grave wisdom of maturity which being dead to all particular aims to private pleasure personal satisfaction and actual activity as well thinks of and is concerned for merely what is universal she makes this wisdom the laughing-stock of raw and wanton youth an object of derision and scorn 
unworthy of their enthusiasm she asserts that it is everywhere the force of youth that really counts she upholds this as of primary significance extols a son as one who is the lord and master of the mother who has borne him a brother as one in whom the sister finds man on a level with herself a youth as one through whom the daughter deprived of her dependence on the family unity acquires the satisfaction and the dignity of wifehood the community however can preserve itself only by suppressing the spirit of individualism and because the latter is an essential element the community likewise creates it as well and creates it too by taking up the attitude of seeking to suppress it as a hostile principle nevertheless since by cutting itself off from the universal purpose this hostile element is merely evil and in itself of no account it would be quite ineffective if the community did not recognize the force of youth manhood which while immature still remains in the condition of particularity as the force of the whole for the community the whole is a nation it is itself individuality and it really only is something for itself by other individualities being for it by its excluding these from itself and knowing itself independent of them the negative side of the community suppressing the isolation of individuals within its own bounds but originating activity directed beyond those bounds finds the weapons of its warfare in individuals war is the spirit and form in which the essential moment of ethical substance the absolute freedom of ethical self-consciousness from all and every kind of existence is manifestly confirmed and realized well on the one hand war makes the particular spheres of property and personal independence as well as the personality of the individual himself feel the force of negation and destruction on the other hand this engine of negation and destruction stands out as that which preserves the whole in security the individual who provides pleasure to woman the brave youth the suppressed principle of ruin and destruction comes now into prominence and is the factor of primary significance and worth it is now physical strength and what seems like the chance of fortune that decide as to the existence of ethical life and spiritual necessity because the existence of the ethical life thus rests on physical strength and the chances of fortune it is eo ipso settled that its overthrow has come while only household gods in the former case gave way before and were absorbed in the national spirit here the living individual embodiments of the national spirit fall by their own individuality and disappear in one universal community whose bare universality is soulless and dead and whose living activity is found in the particular individual qua particular the ethical form and embodiment of the life of spirit has passed away and another mode appears in its place this disappearance of the ethical substance and its transition into another mode are thus determined by the ethical consciousness being directed upon the law essentially in an immediate way it lies in this character of immediacy that nature at all enters into the acts which constitute the ethical life its realization simply reveals the contradiction and the germ of destruction which lie hid within that very peace and beauty belonging to the gracious harmony and unbroken equilibrium of the ethical spirit for the essence and meaning of this immediacy contains a contradiction it is at once the unconscious peace of nature and the self-conscious unresting peace of spirit on account of this naturalness the ethical life of a nation is in general a kind of individuality determined by and therefore limited by nature and thus finds its dissolution in and gives place to another type of individuality this characteristic being given a positive existence is a limitation but at the same time is the negative element in general and the self of individuality since however this determinateness passes away the life of spirit and this substance conscious of itself in all its component individuals are lost the determinate character comes forth and stands apart as a formal universality in the case of all the component individuals and no longer dwells within them as a living spirit instead the uniform solidarity of its individuality has burst into a plurality of separate points end of section four recording by phone section five of the phenomenology of mind volume two 
by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, translated by James Black Bailey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by phone. Chapter 6a, subsection c. The condition of right or legal status. Translator's note. A further step in the realization of the principle of coherent sociality is reached when the individual is invested with the universality of the social order by definite enactments of the controlling agency of the social whole. His contingency as an individual is removed by his being expressly treated as a focal unity of the whole order, whose very existence is staked on maintaining him as a unit with a universal significance and which stands or falls by maintaining him in this condition the universal order is in this case no longer merely implicit merely a matter of routine and custom it is openly and objectively expressed in and through each individual component of society the form this takes is the differentiation of the social substance into a totality of persons each and all invested with express universal or legally acknowledged significance this is the sphere of legal personality or of individuality constituted by a system of rights it is a supreme achievement of social existence and the highest attainment of coherent social experience hence the present section this is a condition or stage in every developed community but the specific historical material for this section is derived from the law-constituted social order of the roman empire especially the empire under the antonines here whether by coincidence or otherwise the culmination of imperial rule and the golden age of law synchronized the triumph of roman imperial government and the perfecting of the system of roman jurisprudence were accomplished during the same period of time about a d one thirty one to two thirty five there is every reason to suppose that the two necessarily arose and fell together and that the decline and disappearance of the roman law constituted state should thus prepare the way for a further achievement of the social spirit of humanity hence the historical justification for the transition to the next stage of social life that of self-discordant spiritual existence with this section should be read hegel's philosophy of history part three especially the introduction to this part and section three chapter one rome under the emperors end of translator's note the condition of right or legal status the general comprehensive unity into which the living immediate unity of individuality and the ethical substance falls back is the soulless geistlos community which has ceased to be the unselfconscious substance of individuals and in which they now each in a separate individual existence count as selves and substances with a being of their own the universal being thus split up into the atomic units of a sheer plurality of individuals this inoperative lifeless spirit is a principle of equality in which all count for as much as each that is have the significance of persons what in the realm of the ethical life was called the hidden divine law has in fact come out of concealment to the light of the actuality in the former the individual was and was counted actual merely as a blood relation merely as sharing in the general life of the family qua particular individual he was the selfless departed spirit now however he has come out of his unreality because the ethical substance is only objective true spirit only implies spirit the individual on that account turns back to the immediate certainty of his own self he is that substance qua positive universal but his actuality consists in being a negative universal self we saw the powers and forms of the ethical world sink in the bare necessity of mere destiny this power of the ethical world is a substance turning itself back into its ultimate and simple nature but that absolute being turning back into itself that very necessity of characterless destiny is nothing else than the ego of self-consciousness this is taken henceforth as what is absolutely real as the ultimate self-contained reality to be so acknowledged is its substantiality but this is abstract universality because its content is this rigid self not the self dissolved in the substance personality then has here risen out of the life and activity of the ethical substance it is a condition in which the independence of consciousness has actual concrete validity 
the unrealized abstract thought of such independence which arises through renouncing actuality was at an earlier stage before our notice in the form of stoical self-consciousness just as the latter was the outcome of lordship and bondage the mode in which self-consciousness exists immediately so personality is the outgrowth of the immediate life of spirit which is the universal controlling will of all as well as their dutiful obedience and submissive service what in stoicism was implicit merely in an abstract way is now an explicit concrete world stoicism is nothing else than the mood of consciousness which reduces to its abstract form the principle of legal status the principle of the sphere of right an independence devoid of the qualities of spirit geistlos by its flight from actuality it attained merely the idea of independence it is absolutely subjective exists solely for itself in that it does not link its being to anything that exists but rather wants to give up every kind of existence and places its essential meaning in the unity of mere thinking in the same manner the right of a person is not linked on to a richer or more powerful existence of the individual qua individual nor again connected with a universal living spirit but rather is attached to the mere unit of its abstract reality or to that unit qua self-consciousness in general now just as the abstract independence of stoicism set forth the stages of its actualization so too this last form of independence personality will recapitulate the process of the former mode the former stoicism passes over into the state of sceptical confusion into a fickle instability of negation which without adopting any permanent form strays from one contingent mode of being and thinking to another dissipates them indeed in absolute independence but just as readily creates their independence once more in fact it is simply the contradiction of consciousness claiming to be at once independent and yet devoid of independence in like manner the personal independence characteristic of the sphere of right is really a similar universal confusion and reciprocal dissolution of this kind for what passes into the absolute essential reality is self-consciousness in the sense of the bare empty unit of the person as against this empty universality the substance has the form of what supplies the filling and the content and this content is now left completely detached and disconnected for the spirit which kept it in subjection and held it in its unity is no longer present the empty unit of the person is therefore as regards its reality an accidental existence a contingent insubstantial process and activity that comes to no durable subsistence just as was the case in scepticism the formalism of right is thus by its very conception without special content it finds at its hand the fact of possession a fact subsisting in multiplicity and imprints thereon the abstract universality by which it is called property the same sort of abstraction as scepticism made use of but while the reality so determined is in scepticism called a mere appearance a mere semblance and has merely a negative value in the case of right it has a positive significance the negative value in the former case consists in the real having the meaning of self qua thought qua inherent universal the positive significance in the latter case however consists in its being mine in the sense of the category as something whose validity is admitted recognized and actual both are the same abstract universal the actual content the proper value of what is mine whether it be an external possession or again inner riches or poverty of mind and character is not contained in this empty form and does not concern it the content belongs therefore to a particular specific power which is something different from the formal universal is chance and caprice consciousness of right therefore in the course of the very process of making its claim good finds that it loses its own reality discovers its complete lack of inherent substantiality and that to describe an individual as a person is to use an expression of contempt the free and unchecked power possessed by the content takes determinate shape in this way the absolute plurality of dispersed atomic personalities is by the nature of this characteristic feature gathered at the same time into a single centre alien to them and just as devoid of the life of spirit geistlos 
that central point is in one respect like the atomic rigidity of their personality a merely particular reality but in contrast to their empty particularity it has the significance of the entire content and hence is taken to be the essential element while again in contrast to their pretended absolute but inherently insubstantial reality it is the universal power and absolute actuality this lord and master of the world takes himself in this way to be the absolute person comprising at the same time all existence within himself for whom there exists no higher type of spirit he is a person but the sole and single person who has challenged confronted and conquered all these all constitute and establish the triumphant universality of the one person for this particular as such is truly what it is only qua universal plurality of particular units cut off from this plurality the solitary and single self is in fact a powerless and unreal self at the same time it is the consciousness of the content which is antithetically opposed to that universal personality this content however when liberated from its negative power means chaos of spiritual powers which when let loose as elemental independent agencies break out into wild extravagances and excesses and fall on one another in mad destruction their helpless self-consciousness is the powerless inoperative enclosure and the arena of their chaotic tumult but this master and lord of the world aware of his being the sum and substance of all actual powers is the titanic self-consciousness which takes itself to be the living god since however he exists merely qua formal self which is unable to tame and subdue those powers his procedure and his self-enjoyment are equally gigantic extravagance the lord of the world becomes really conscious of what he is that is the universal might of actuality by that power of destruction which he exercises against the contrasted selfhood of his subjects for his power is not a spiritual union and concord in which the various persons might get to know their own self-consciousness rather they exist as persons separately for themselves and all continuity with others is excluded from the absolute punctual atomicity of their nature they are therefore in a merely negative relation a relation of exclusion both to one another and to him who is their principle of connection or continuity qua discontinuity he is the essential being and content of their formal nature a content however foreign to them and a being hostile in character which abolishes just what they take to be their very essence that is bare subjectivity without any content mere empty independent existence each on its own account and again qua the continuity of their personality he destroys this very personality itself juridical personality thus finds itself rather without any substance of its own since content alien to it is imposed on it and holds good within it and does so there because such content is the reality of that type of personality on the other hand the passion for destroying and turning over everything on this unreal field gains for itself the consciousness of its complete supremacy but this self is barren desolation and hence is merely beside itself and is indeed the very abandonment and rejection of its own self-consciousness such then is the constitution of that aspect in which self-consciousness qua absolute being is actual the consciousness however that is driven back into itself out of this actuality thinks this its insubstantiality makes it an object of thought formerly we saw the stoical independence of pure thought pass through scepticism and find its true issue in the unhappy consciousness the truth about what constitutes its inherent and explicit nature its final reality if this knowledge appeared at that stage merely as the one-sided view of a consciousness qua consciousness here the actual truth of that view has made its appearance the truth consists in the fact that this universal accepted objectivity of self-consciousness is reality estranged from it this objectivity is the universal actuality of the self but this actuality is directly the perversion of the self as well it is the loss of its essential being the reality of the self that was not found in the ethical world has been gained by its reverting into the person what in the case of the former was all harmony and union comes now on the scene no doubt in developed form 
but self estranged end of section five recording by phone section six of the phenomenology of mind volume two by george wilhelm friedrich hegel translated by james black baby this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by phone. Chapter 6b. Spirit in Self-Estrangement. The Discipline of Culture. Translator's Note. The life of spirit, as found in the social self-consciousness, has two fundamental factors, the universal spirit or social whole as such, and the individual members as such. The interrelation of these constitutes the spiritual existence of society, each by itself is abstract but the realization of complete spiritual life through and in each is absolutely essential for spiritual fulfillment in the preceding analysis of spirit one form of this process has been considered the realization of the objective social order in and through individuals in the succeeding section with its various subsections the other process of securing the same general result is analyzed we have the movement by which starting from the individual spirit the realization of complete spiritual existence is established the former starts from the compact solidarity of the social substance and results in the establishment of separate and individually complete legal personalities the latter process starts from the rigidly exclusive unity of the individual self and issues in the establishment of a social order of absolutely universal and therefore absolutely free wills both processes are per se abstract necessary though they are hence as we shall find a further stage in the evolution of spirit has still to appear the process of spirit in this second stage assumes from the start a conscious contrast between the individual spirit and the universal spiritual whole a contrast which while profound the individual seeks to remove because the universality of spiritual existence which he seeks to attain is implicitly involved in his very being as a spiritual entity his spiritual life seems to begin with rent in twain so complete is the sense of the opposition of these factors constituting his life his true life his objective embodiment seems outside him altogether and yet is felt to be his own self he seems estranged from his complete self and the estrangement seems his own doing because the substance from which he is cut off is felt to be his own the contrast is the deepest that spirit can possibly experience just because spirit is and knows itself to be self-contained and self-complete the only reality the contrast can only be removed by effort and struggle for the individual spirit has to create or recreate for itself and by its own activity a universal objective spiritual realm which it implies and in which alone it can be free and feel itself at home the struggle spirit goes through is thus the greatest in the whole range of its experience for the opposition to be overcome is the profoundest that exists since its aim is to achieve the highest for itself nothing sacred can be allowed to stand in its way it will make any sacrifice and if necessary produce the direst spiritual disaster a spiritual reign of terror to accomplish its result the movement of spirit here analyzed covers every form of the individual's struggle for a substantial spiritual life it embraces the intellectual economic religious and the ethical in a narrower sense of these terms it embraces all that we mean by culture and civilization hence the various parts of the argument spiritual discipline enlightenment the pursuit of wealth belief and superstition absolute freedom the process of spiritual life passed under critical review here is familiar to a greater or less extent in every age and every society but the actual historical material present to the mind of the writer is derived from one the period of european history embracing the entrance of christianity and christian philosophy into european civilization after the fall of the roman empire and the intellectual humanistic awakening of the renaissance which led on to the ecclesiastical revolution known as the reformation two the rationalistic movement of the eighteenth century the so-called enlightenment which preceded and culminated in the french revolution the supreme outburst of spiritual emancipation known in european history these two periods far removed as they are in time have much in common 
they embody principles of spiritual development fundamentally alike and are therefore freely drawn upon in the analysis regardless of historicity much of hegel's analysis of the first stage of this spiritual movement has also directly in view the character of rameau in diderot's dialogue le niveau de rameau this remarkable work was written in seventeen sixty but was first brought to the notice of the literary public by goethe who translated and published the work in eighteen o five it thus came into hegel's hand while he was writing the phenomenology and this perhaps accounts for the repeated references to it in the argument the term self-estranged spirit with which he heads this section occurs in goethe's translation rameau is an extreme type of such a spirit with this section should be read hegel's philosophy of history part three section three chapter two part four section two chapter one section three chapter one and three the history of philosophy part three introduction and chapter two the french philosophy and the german enlightenment end of translator's note spirit in self-estrangement the discipline of culture the ethical substance preserved and kept opposition enclosed within its simple conscious life and this consciousness was in immediate unity with its own essential nature that nature has therefore the simple characteristic of something merely existing for the consciousness which is directed immediately upon it and whose custom zita it is consciousness does not stand for a particular excluding self nor does the substance mean for it an existence shut out from it with which it would have to establish its identity only through estranging itself and yet at the same time have to produce that estrangement but that mind whose self is absolutely insular absolutely discreet finds its content over against itself in the form of a reality that is just as impenetrable as itself and the world here gets the characteristic of being something external negative to self-consciousness yet this world is a spiritual reality it is essentially the fusion of individuality with being this its existence is the work of self-consciousness but likewise an actuality immediately present and alien to it which has a peculiar being of its own and in which it does not know itself this reality is the external element and the free content of the sphere of legal right but this external reality which the master of the world of legal right takes control of is not merely this elementary irreducible entity casually lying before the self it is his work but not in a positive sense rather negatively so it preserves its existence by self-consciousness of its own accord relinquishing itself and giving up its essentiality the condition which in that waste and ruin which prevail in the sphere of right the external force of the elements let loose seem to bring upon self-consciousness these elements by themselves are sheer ruin and destruction and cause their own overthrow this overthrow however this their negative nature is just the self it is their subject their action and their process such process and activity again through which the substance becomes actual are the alienation of personality for the immediate self that is the self without estrangement and holding good as it stands is without substantial content and the sport of these raging elements its substance is thus just its relinquishment and the relinquishment is the substance that is the spiritual powers forming themselves into a coherent world and thereby securing their subsistence the substance in this way is spirit self-conscious unity of the self and the essential nature but both also take each other to mean and to imply alienation spirit is consciousness of an objective reality which exists independently on its own account over against this consciousness stands however that unity of the self with the essential nature consciousness pure and simple over against actual consciousness on the one side actual self-consciousness by its self-relinquishment passes over into the real world and the latter back again into the former on the other side however this very actuality both person and objectivity is cancelled and superseded they are purely universal this its alienation is pure consciousness or the essential nature the present has at once its opposite in its beyond which consists in its thinking and its being thought just as this again has its opposite in what is here in the present which is its actuality alienated from it 
spirit in this case therefore constructs not merely one world but a twofold world divided and self-opposed the world of the ethical spirit is its own proper present and hence every power it possesses is found in this unity of the present and so far as each separates itself from the other each is still in equilibrium with the whole nothing has the significance of a negative of self-consciousness even the spirit of the departed is in the life-blood of his relative is present in the self of the family and the universal power of government is the will the self of the nation here however what is present means merely objective actuality which has its consciousness in the beyond each particular moment as an essential entity receives this and thereby actuality from another and so far as it is actual its essential being is something other than its own actuality nothing has a spirit self-established and indwelling within it rather each is outside itself in what is alien to it the equilibrium of the whole is not the unity which abides by itself nor its inwardly secured tranquillity but rests on the alienation of its opposite the whole is therefore like each particular moment a self-estranged reality it breaks up into two spheres in one kingdom self-consciousness is actually both the self and its object and in another we have the kingdom of pure consciousness which being beyond the former has no actual present but exists for faith is matter of belief now just as the ethical world passes from the separation of divine and human law with its various forms and its consciousness gets away from the division into knowledge and the absence of knowledge and returns into the principle which is its destiny into the self which is the power to destroy and negate this opposition so too both these kingdoms of self-alienated spirit will return into the self but while the former was the first self holding good directly the particular person the second which returns into itself from its self-relinquishment will be the universal self the consciousness grasping the conception and these spiritual worlds all of whose moments insist on being a fixed reality and an unspiritual subsistence will be dissolved in the light of pure insight this insight being the self-grasping itself completes the stage of culture it takes up nothing but the self and everything as the self that is it comprehends everything extinguishes all objectiveness and converts everything implicit into something explicit everything which has a being in itself into what is for itself when turned against belief against faith as the far-away region of inner being lying in the distant beyond it is enlightenment aufklärung this enlightenment also terminates self-estrangement in this region where their spirit in self-alienation turns to seek its safety as to a region where it becomes conscious of a peace adequate to itself enlightenment upsets the household arrangements which spirit carries out in the house of faith by bringing in the goods and furnishings belonging to the world of the here and now a world which that spirit cannot refuse to accept as its own property for its conscious life likewise belongs to that world in this negative task pure insight realizes itself at the same time and brings to light its own proper object the unknowable absolute being and utility since in this way actuality has lost all substantiality and there is nothing more implicit in it the kingdom of faith as also that of the real world is overthrown and this revolution brings about absolute freedom the stage at which the spirit formerly estranged has gone back completely into itself leaves behind this sphere of culture and passes over into another region the land of the inner or subjective moral consciousness moralischen bewusstsein end of section six recording by phone